Hello again, Truth Seekers, and thank you for tuning in. St. Elmo's fire is a rare weather phenomenon that occurs in specific conditions, usually on pointed objects at sea like the tips of masts on ships. Here's the uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not explanation just to get the mainstream version of why and how this phenomenon occurs. As with many truth-seeking researchers out there, the mud flood, Tartary and the new adjusted historical timeline has connected a lot of dots and things are really starting to make a whole lot more sense. On a personal level, these new avenues of research have consolidated many of the so-called conspiracy theories that I've been looking into for the last five years and the big picture just got a whole lot bigger. The evidence of buildings and structures utilizing free atmospheric energy is now overwhelming. Here's just a few of the different aerials used to harness this energy which is all around us in the ether. There are also historical pictures showing this energy being used and sometimes in unusual and entertaining ways. As with most of us armchair researchers, our expertise lies in many different fields and not necessarily in the sciences. So the content of this video is at best educated speculation and at worst uneducated guesswork. Saying that, with an awake mind and a passion for re-education, we seem to get nearer the truth than the mainstream historians who are stuck in the we must believe the textbooks paradigm. A recently uploaded video from Flat Earth British Sub really struck a chord with me and I was sure I'd seen something similar from way back in school. This energy is harvested from the ether. That is now overwhelmingly evident, but for what purpose is still unclear. Free electricity, healing energy, nutritional value, inspirational vibrations. The list is long and as yet disappointingly incomplete. But the more we're finding out about the ether and why Einstein had to get rid of it, in true Freemasonic style, with his relativity theories, which his wife helped him write, as you do, the more it becomes clear that the ether is the missing link, so to speak, that binds us all together somehow. In this video, you will see the possible St. Elmo's fire, but also listen to the sounds. As a musician, I recognize the harmonics being generated here. Sound as we know it is an integral part of the mystery surrounding all of this research. Incidentally, this building, which is the Royal Palace in, in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, hosts these dancers from the Royal Ballet. Look at the headdresses they are wearing. That's some serious tech they've got on their heads. It's the poshest tinfoil hat I've ever seen. Does it remind you of any other posh hats? Just a quick deflection from the main content and a possible new avenue of research. Have a look at the control panels inside the old Battersea Power Station in London, which I believe to be a collector and distributor of atmospheric energy in its prime. What do these remind you of? These maybe? Graphic equalizers for fine tuning the resonant frequencies? Just speculating here, but maybe it's worth following up in another video. Could St. Elmo's fire be the natural manifestation of this atmospheric energy? My humble research tells me yes. We know that to harvest this energy, we have to get up high. The higher the aerial, the higher the voltage. 
All structures utilizing this energy are tall. The church and cathedral spires, the domes and spires on buildings, the aerials on top of skyscrapers, etc., etc. This makes sense when looking at St. Elmo's fire because it occurs on pointed objects high up, i.e. the masts of ships sailing on a salty sea or ocean. The electromagnetic nature of our world needs salt water to work. Just like an old-fashioned battery, the medium in which the charge is obtained is paramount. Some work better than others, but it is a well-known fact that salt water is a really good conductor of electricity. Where does this free and inexhaustible source of power come from? Who knows? The community of white-coated yes-men called scientists can happily disregard any awkward questions about this subject because their good old mate Einstein and his missus remove the median in which the power manifests itself. Don't know about you guys, but this looks to me like the atmosphere getting charged up. But hey, what do I know? I haven't got letters after my name. Just a quick observation. Ever notice that when lightning hits these power receptors on tall buildings, it's stronger, thicker, and longer lasting than normal lightning? Coincidence? I think not. Let's take a quick look at one of the most iconic buildings in New York, the Empire State. This beautiful old world building is Antiquitech of the highest quality. The original plaque in the lobby was replaced in the 1970s due to refurbishment. It originally stated that this building supplied power to seven states. Really? An office block that supplied electricity for hundreds of miles around? How is that possible? To me, it is plainly obvious why they wanted and needed to replace that plaque. As I said early on guys, this is just speculation, but the evidence seems to point in this direction. It's early days in this field of research, but I just wanted to throw this idea out there to see what transpires. Maybe you guys can shed some more light on this fascinating subject. Thank you.